Hi, my name is Rubidium. Today we're gonna to look at how to slow down 60p footage into a 24, 25 frame per second timeline and achieve pretty decent slow motion in post-production. Every time that a new camera is released these days, there's a lot of complaints about how it doesn't do super slow motion, and if it does, it doesn't do it on the full frame of the sensor. The C500 Mark II that Canon released last week crops in um, to do 120p, which is what we're gonna achieve today in post, all the way down from full frame to super 16, so less than a quarter of the sensor. 120 frames is about as slow as most digital cinema cameras go. If you want something like 500, 1000 frames a second, you need to get a specialized slow motion camera like the Phantom. So we're gonna look at how we're gonna achieve this and also what shots work better with post slow motion and what shots don't. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16. We have a couple of clips to look at. The first one is of me walking towards camera. The second one is of dropping a ball. So I'm gonna use this as what you can and can't do for post slow motion. As you can notice here, we are 59.94 frames per second, but in the settings, we are a 24 frame per second project. Let's go over into our edit page and we'll start with the walk. We'll get the point where it starts walking, set that as in, set that as out. But before we drag it in, we're gonna go up to clip attributes. Instead of the video frame rate, we are gonna use 23 or 24. Now, when I drag my clip into the timeline and zoom in on it, if I play that back, See here in the, the timeline, I'm gonna get, you know, three times slow motion almost. So that's 60p slow motion. Um, it's pretty easy to do. What I should just do before we do this is go in, grade my look a little, pull my colors up so we're not looking at a log image. Increase my saturation. And then maybe go into my raw and change my white balance a little. So that looks nice but it's not slow enough. It's not that epic slow motion. Um, what I want are the 120 frames per second. So what I'm gonna do is ask Resolve to do that for me. I'm gonna go back to my edit page. Let's get rid of the audio on this clip so it's not confusing. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna say clip speed, and I'm gonna bring it down from 100% to 50%. This almost always messes up where your clip is taken from. So you have to readjust the start and end of your clip because you're essentially reinterpreting it from the start. So now what I'm gonna do is turn on the inspector, select my clip, go down to retiming and scaling. And instead of project settings, I'm gonna select optical flow. And instead of motion estimation, I'm gonna do speed warp. What that's gonna do very slowly is guess now that we've stretched it out and left a space between each frame because we went from 100% to 50%, what Resolve is gonna do is analyze every frame and extrapolate what could go between the frames, essentially build a slow motion for us. We are going to re-import it into Resolve. So I'll select ProRes 422. If I were to do H.264, every iteration I'm gonna lose quality. ProRes 422 is a nice balance between sort of lossless quality and small file sizes. And I'll put it in the same directory that we got this from. Is As I add this to the render queue, you'll see, you know, up here we're getting three to four frames per second. If I'm just rendering out 4K RAW from um, Resolve on my computer, I typically get about 60 frames per second. So you can see that it's making the computer work much more intensely than it typically does. I'll fast forward through the rest of this uh, so that you don't have to watch it. So let's go back to our data page and re-import that same clip we just outputted. So here's what we just rendered. As you can see, it's significantly slower. This is a true 120 frames per second and it's pretty good. 
Resolve is good enough now that it can guess what the frames in between look like on this kind of footage and get something that's full sensor 120 frames per second. Let's compare it to the original one. And this is the um, extrapolated one. This is the uh, optical flow one. So you can see it's half the speed. It goes from 60p to 120p with no real distortion. So you might be saying, that's great. I'm gonna do this with all my slow motion. I don't need 120p. Well, let's look at another clip and it'll be more obvious exactly what Resolve is doing and the, the problems with that. This one again, we'll have to change our clip attributes from 59 to 24. We'll drop in our new slower motion. And as you can see, no issue there at all because I'm just, all I'm doing is going from fast to slow. But now what I do is repeat my change clip speed down to keep it with 50%. Now you'll see it's very strobey because only every second frame is there. Now in retiming and scaling, I'll do optical flow and speed warp and it won't play back anything near retime. So I'll have to re export and re-import it for us to watch it. As you can see, it starts at 12 seconds, drops back down to three frames per second. Go across to our media page, re-import. So I'll throw, throw a grade on it just so it's not quite so harsh to look at. So if I go to the um, color page and just watch it through now, watch this new version, you'll see as I just use my arrow keys to step through that around here, it's kind of guessing wrong. It's not able to slow down. It kind of gives a little bit of a predator, you know, camo, thermoptic camouflage look as it guesses wrong where the ball travels through. You see here the, um, extrapolation it's doing is wrong because it's, it's adding this funny frame around it. So we watch it back in real time. It's still, it looks okay, but it's certainly, there's a couple of frames there that are just really off. Like, look at this one. It's just, the fact is that this, the ball is moving too fast through the frame for Resolve to be able to guess intelligently what the middle frames are, right? This frame is fine. Two frames back is fine because they're the original frames, but its guess is it gives these crazy distortions. So there is a way around that. What we're going to do is add motion blur to it. I shot this at a high um, shutter speed, not a frame rate, a high shutter speed. So what I'm doing is going to add motion blur in post because motion blur does make it much more difficult for the computer to guess. So I'm going to add a large motion blur and make it better. And then I'm going to add, you know, a lot, like 75 on the settings. So you can see it's adding motion blur all through the drop now. And that motion blur is kind of covering up, you know, the, the funny um, effect that the extra, the um, motion extrapolation is doing. So we see now there's still a little bit of it, right? Like it's still, there's still a bit of a double image here. And that may be not what you want. And you can see that, you know, the motion blur does hide like the worst sins of the, uh, of the um, frame ext uh, extrapolation. Extreme slow motion, um, you do have to go out and hire a uh, Phantom 4K to get your 500,000 frames a second. But uh, if you just want a cool slow walk to camera or even some decently slow movement, like someone tossing their hair or someone um, doing anything that's normal range of movement, you should be fine with the uh, with the settings in Resolve. You should be fine with the optical flow and uh, speed warp that Resolve 16 has. It really does help a lot. It's much more sophisticated than the um, frame blending of previous um, generations. But like I said, it's not perfect, and you can hide things with that motion blur in post. So that was our look at slowing footage, regular 60p footage down to 100, 120 frames using optical flow and speed warp in DaVinci Resolve 16. It is a really great way to get beautiful slow motion looking footage on the full size of your sensor without cropping in or having to get a specialized camera. As you can see, it's not perfect for every shot, but for a lot of the uses of slow motion, like you know introductions of characters or tough guy shots, um, it's gonna work great. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.